thank you for volunteering to present today, David. Um, uh, for those that don't know David, he's a PG student or, well, PG graduate, I guess now, uh, from <laughs> University College London, <laughs> right? Uh, with uh, Mina Wright then. Um, cool. Um, your dates are a bit weird. Oh, yes, I guess you, you dated it yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Thanks, Leo. Yeah. Um, so today, hopefully, it will be a relatively quick one because uh, pre-commit hooks. The topic I'm going to talk to you guys about is is a relatively straightforward one. But the reason I wanted to kind of talk about it is is when I came across pre-commit hooks, I thought it was a quite a quite a nifty tool for a lot of things that. I felt I was kind of doing manually over and over again and uh, or forgetting to do from time to time. And as you'll see, pre-commit hooks are a, a great way to, to kind of automate some of these processes. So to get started, it's good to know first what Git hooks are. Um, I'm sure some of you will be aware, but this is something really prior to in being introduced to pre-commit hooks that I didn't know about. But in pretty much any repository that is linked up to GitHub, you'll have your .git folder in, in the root of your project, and then you'll have another hooks directory. It's something I've never looked into and kind of just uh, felt like left to the kind of Git gods behind the scene. But really what, what's inside is um, a set of scripts that each one is colloquially termed kind of a hook. And these are customizable scripts that can really do um, any sort of thing and are triggered upon a certain action. So in the screenshot, you can see by the naming nomenclature that a lot of actions, for example, a commit, a merge, or a push could, could sort of trigger um, uh, one of these scripts to become active. And in this case, today, what I'm gonna to talk to you about is the set of scripts or hooks that become active just prior to you committing. So that's why they're called pre-commit hooks. And in general, they're a developer tool that helps you to regulate your commits. Um, and they're a, a tool that has been, maybe still are most popular within Python. Um, um, and recently, I think with the introduction of a, a CRAN package, they've been kind of seeping um, in, in usage into R as well. How I conceptually like to think of pre-commits is kind of like a traffic light for your commits. And in, in reality, it probably doesn't really sit in between your git add and your git commit. Um, it probably sits somewhere um, alongside your git commit. But I think conceptually, this is a useful sort of um, mental image to have. What, what happens is, uh, is that you'll git add some, a set of files, and then when you go to git commit something, your pre-commit will act as this sort of set of traffic likes or rules or hooks. And the files that you've then added have to pass these sort of checks prior to them being successfully committed. And so why, why would you use pre-commit hooks? I think if I broadly from what I've seen, the reasons for their usage kind of fall into four, um, four categories. We've, we've all been there when we've accidentally committed, let's say a massive file or a set of scripts that shouldn't have been there or some sort of system um, um, kind of DS store on a Mac. And uh, uh, th this is something that pre-commit hooks can prevent. Also something that I've become more attuned to is to try and have a consistent style. I know Bioconductor sort of implements this a little bit through its Bioc style. Um, I think within Leo's uh, BioC this package is, um, is an implementation for that. But also, you can use pre-commit hooks to ensure a consistent style throughout uh, your commits. And this might be more important for point three, where you're collaborating 
on sort of an open source project. Someone new has just come on board and they want to contribute, but instead of them having to learn all of the sort of, um, you know, uh, how many indents you want for, 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 for your code, you can instead employ a pre-commit hook just to, to make sure that everyone is, is um, on board with the same coding standard. The final thing is, is to automate easily forgotten repetitive processes. And I think just to make this more concrete, how I've thought about these for R and what I've used these for in the past for R is first to kind of prevent the commitment of, of large files. Um, for example, maybe also to, if you've used a browser statement for debugging at some point in your code, uh, I've always accidentally left that in at, at times. So it's a good one to catch that. Um, if you guys already use styling or linting, it's, um, it's uh, for example, for collaborative projects, um, that, that's where you, you can kind of employ a pre-commit hook to make sure that any committed file, for example, has to pass your, your styler before it gets committed um, and, and similar with the linter. One thing that I always forget to do, for example, in, in, in developing R packages is rendering the RMD for the readme into an MD. So uh, it, it, a pre-commit hook has, um, can be used again there to make sure that your, the creation of your MD has occurred after uh, or at the same time as, as the last edit to your RMD. Right. And finally, when you run DevTools document to create your .rd files in an R package, again, something that I often kind of forget to do. And uh, just after I've edited the documentation, for example, and you can also use pre-commit hooks to, to catch that. So it's really easy, really, to start getting set up with pre-commit hooks. Um, the first step that you need to do is to install what's called pre-commit on, um, on your system. This only has to be done once. And uh, if you follow the link, there'll be a website, but um, a set of developers have developed a framework uh, for managing pre-commit hooks across multiple languages. And to install this, um, you, you can either use sort of pip or brew on a Mac, but many sort of, um, standard ways of, of installing this sort of tool. After you've installed that, the first element you need to get set up before using pre-commit is to set up your config file. And this will sort of detail which hooks or which rules you want to have in place for that particular project. And, and this, will, you, you'll, uh, this will sit in the root of your project folder um, and be required for every project that you would like to use pre-commit within. Just a very simplistic um, sort of uh, um, example here at the bottom where there's three main components of each hook within a pre-commit. It's uh, structured in a YAML file. So if you guys uh, are familiar with the GitHub Actions sort of syntax, it will, it will look very familiar to you. Um, but the, the essentially um, components are one being the repo or the, the kind of where you find this hook defined um, and the hook uh, being just kind of a, a script of um, originating from, from some, some, someone's definition um, across really any language that you, you wanted. Um, this uh, hook ID, which will be a name that's given by the author to this particular hook. Often it's informative. For example, in this case, this hook will keep your RMD, uh, um, make sure that your RMD is rendered before committing. And also you can have some associated configuration. For example, exclude is, is, a, is a tag that allows you to remove files that you don't want to check for example. So here there's, a, there's another hook that makes sure um, your R code can all run without, without errors. And you might not want that, for example, within, um, within some of your test code, I, I think is, is the reason for this conflict. Um, the, this, this line of three, this RF is a um, 
nomenclature for the exact version of the, the hook, and it's based on the, um, the, the version of the, the, the GitHub re repo when they've said it. So for example, if, they if you wanted to update to the most recent version of this hook, you would have to change the rev here. Once you have got that set up, um, all you need to do um, is go to the root of your project in, let's say, a bash terminal and just run pre-commit install once you, per project. And after that, kind of every commit that you, you make will, will kind of be checked to pass your hooks. Um, and then, and then bas basically you're done. And every time you, you make a commit, you'll see this um, coming up. So I think now is a good time. I, I just wanted to prep a very kind of um, basic documentation, uh, sorry, demonstration of how this might work in practice. So this is just a kind of a, one of my, like a, 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 any real kind of R project that you, you guys have going. And let's say you have a readme and within the readme, um, you've added some sort of spurious um, spacing in there, right? Um, um, and then if you go, let's say here, I'm in the, the same RUtils um, project um, folder, and you can see from the git status that I've just modified the readme. If I um, add the readme and then let's um, commit and make a sort of uh, a, a, an arbitrary message, and what you'll see is here, you'll run all of the hooks that have been set up and it will tell you which ones have passed and failed. Here, you can see that the, the readme hasn't been rendered, right? Um, I'd made a change without actually rendering it to an MD, so that, that's, that's failed. The other addition is that the styling caught the space that I added as a spurious space, so it's been automatically run. And um, in this case, when styling makes a change to a particular um, uh, a file, this will then um, uh, cause the styling to fail. And then uh, you, you'll have to go back and let's say if in this case, if I go to a commit tab and check, what you can see is that the style has automatically removed the spurious space. For you. Um, so I think to be honest, um, that that's uh, pretty much, um, uh, how, as, as <laughs> the, the entirety of the, the process. Um, one other thing to add here is that, let, let me just make the spurious space again um, so that uh, the, the commit happens. I, I just wanna make sure um, to show that this also does work. Um, so the pre-commit hooks also do work interactively when you're using the IDE. However, I kind of prefer the way that they're printed out um, on, on, a, on a bash terminal, right? You, you get a little bit more um, kind of highlighting there, which makes it easier to read, I think. Um, but it, but if, you, if you do feel um, uh, like it's easier on the ID, it, it does work there too. So a couple of useful tips um, that I kind of picked up on my, my journey of using pre-commit is, well, something that's useful, for example, if you're just introducing pre-commit into a project is to run it against all files. Um, and, and you can do that, for example, just by running uh, this command in the root of your um, um, project. The, the thing that often this will come up and, and um, if you've included a linter is you'll get a whole list of sort of warnings because the linter doesn't like um, the way you've formatted certain scripts. Um, but I think it's a, it's a good one to run anyway. Um, and, and one thing to note here is that, for example, when you've configured um, uh, your, your pre-commit hooks within your config, um, I just wanna go down to the, the one where I've added the linter hook. What you can do is make sure that regardless of whether the linter throws something up, it's just gonna be a warning rather than preventing the commit. Um, so, so you could, uh, th th there's a whole host of sort of config that you could do here, but this, for example, is one of the, the most useful. Um, 
Another thing, sometimes like you'll want to just quickly commit something and not worry about the pre-commit. Um, um, usually this will just be, for example, if you want to change something and run it on GitHub Actions, I found, and then I just, I, I kind of don't want to deal with the pre-commit. I just want a quick answer of whether I've solved a GitHub Actions problem. Then um, I, I just sometimes, if you add a, the flag no verify, you'll skip the pre-commit um, checks. Finally, um, um, there is this sort of nice way to um, set up. It's a little bit complicated and, and I won't go through it now, but if you wanted to set up pre-commit so that you don't have to run pre-commit install on every project to, to activate it, then you can, you can set it up so that pre-commit will automatically be enabled for every project that you create. Um, I think this has its trade-offs, but um, because sometimes you'll want uh, to, to just get a project set up prior to having to de deal with the pre-commit config. Um, so I think it's, it's uh, up to you to decide whether it, this, is a, this works for, for your setup. Um, so the final thing I really wanted to talk about, um, the final couple of things, the first being, if you did want to create your own hook, um, most often this won't be the case because, well, at least I found that most of the things that I have found that I wanted a pre-commit hook for are already available on this repo um, called pre-commit. This is a, a clan package that has been developed and contains a set of um, what is um, uh, has been determined by the author to be useful hooks for our projects. And all of the ones that I've mentioned in the past um, can be, uh, have been from this particular repository. And you can see uh, the available hooks if you scroll down here. Uh, right. However, it is good to know that um, if you did want to create your own hook, the first thing is that these are, you can really write a hook in any language that you wanted. There's a, a huge number of supported languages. Um, you can see them uh, sort of here, but in reality, a hook is just a script. Um, and um, for example, if you uh, just illustrate this, if you want to look at a simple example, um, this is from the, the same pre-commit repository and it lives in the inst hooks folder. And um, this is the, the hook that checks whether your RMD has, has been rendered. And as you can see, it, it really is just a very short R script with the key thing being that uh, the time of creation of the MD has to be sort of later uh, than the time of creation for, for, for the RMD. So if you did think of developing your own hook, you could write it in R, you could write it in bash, really. Um, um, it, it, it should be a fairly straightforward process, but it's not something I've ever felt the need to do before. So lastly, I just wanted to mention maybe some alternatives and, and trade-offs here. So alternatives, uh, what I felt in the past is you have a choice of whether to put some of these things within your GitHub Actions workflow versus a pre-commit. Um, so for example, your linter. And I think the most obvious difference here is that the pre-commit runs prior to your commit, right? So it will standardize uh, your files prior to them actually being pushed to GitHub. Whereas GitHub Actions will only kind of spot and, and display the error after it's already um, been up. And I think the advantage of pre-commit is obviously that um, for, for a project that maybe is a lot of collaborative work, you, you can make sure that every file that is committed has already been through this sort of standardization process. I think the real disadvantage of this is that there has to be a sort of knowledge for um, of the person making, for example, a pull request or a commit to, to understand pre-commit, right? Um, because pre-commit isn't so popular in R, I feel this is sort of a heavy burden, well, a little bit of a burden of understanding and setup, which um, for an open source project uh, that maybe if you want lots of people to contribute, um, then maybe this is something um, that, sh that should be considered. Um, for example, that each person committing would have to install and configure um, pre-commit um, within their system. 
Whereas in the case of GitHub Actions, it, you don't really um, put that burden on, on any of the contributors. Um, the other worth, thing worth mentioning is that there potentially could be some security concerns because pre-commit hooks are able to run um, on your system and modify files, um, for example, using a styler. And if there were some sort of um, uh, person out there that designed a hook to try and, you know, um, endanger your, your, your system, that I think that there is a possibility of that, that happening and it's, it's worth being aware of. Um, I think the, the kind of counter to this is to try and make sure that when you're using hooks and, and taking them on board, you, you make sure that they're from trusted sources. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, thank you very much. For, for your time today. Hope uh, hope I uh, found something helpful. Thank you, David. Thank you. Um, that was this is great. Like um, I feel like we are gonna start using these pre-commits. But um, I have a question for you. Like, have you checked the um, um, the use this package? It has a use it hook function. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you've um, Compared those hooks versus the ones you got from the um, Lawrence Walter uh, Walter um, repository. Yeah, I did. I did see the use Git hooks, um, but it came, I, I saw it at a, a stage when I've already set up the pre commit from this from this Lorenz guy. So, to be honest, I don't know much about the one from use this. Um, but my my feeling is that maybe there isn't a big well, that there might be not be a complete overlap. Otherwise, um, Lorenz, <laughs> I don't know, kind of um, the, the reason for him making this package. Um, but yeah, I, I have to say that, that I'm, I'm not sure. Right, because uh, <clears throat> this is what I see here, right? So <clears throat> um, this is, for example, the bias to this um, um, repository. And I see I have a pre under the dot git dot forward slash hooks. I see I have a pre commit file okay. and it has this little bash script, right? Yeah. Um, so my impression would be that these are not compatible. You, have, you either have to choose to use these hooks or the ones from Lawrence. Because I imagine my, my general impression is that you only have like a single pre commit um, hook file, right? Um, um, and so the way this was created, I, I looked a bit around. Um, and so um, BioC, this has this use BioC uh, readme RMD function. Mm -hmm. And inside of it, uh, I mean, on the use this readme RMD function. And inside of it, I see that it, um, it has this call to use this uh, git hook. And there's a template on the use this called um, render uh, readme rmd pre-commit dot sh. So we can always look at and use this um, and see what are all the um, all the files that have. If you if you look at the help function for use git hook, I see that they have a few ones here, um, but um, like there's this pre-commit one, um, and I get a commit message one. Um, I don't know how that one would work, right? Mm -hmm. um, but those are potentially the two that um, people might use more, right? Um, yeah, but um, am I am I correct on my like intuition that like you can only have one pre-commit file um, on their um, git hooks? Yeah. No, I think I think you're right um, that you can only have a, a single um, uh, pre-commit pre hook, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm just gonna. Because mm -hmm. um, um yeah um so. And then you said that you, you have to have pre-commit install on the system. So um, I guess uh, for a cluster, we could uh, 
I guess on, on JSPC, we could like have a module and make it a, one of our um, modules that we always load type of thing, right? Um, um, my impression is that with pre-commits, you're actually using your R from your system, not, um, so that might be a little bit easier than GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions takes a lot of time to actually like install R um, and all the dependencies, right? Mm -hmm. Setting all that up. Um, so that might be a bit simpler there. Right? Um, um, but like, um, like one I would be particularly interested in setting up would be the styling one. But uh, can you can you compare that to be used also by a C style? Yeah, I I've done it for for one of my projects. I think there was a little bit of playing around, but I think mm -hmm. in the end. Um, it was just to uh, to make sure that I was taking. Uh, so sorry, I'll let, let me quickly share screen again. Um, so, in the case of the styler, um, depending on how the person has set up their hook, you can include a set of, for example, arguments um, to to configure you know uh, the, the related sort of um, functionality of the hook and in here the default is to use the styler in the tidyverse style but obviously mm -hmm. I think um, you could change that for example to bio see this and, and the the bioc style very straightforward uh, you, would you just type bio c is column column bio c style that would work I guess I think it has to be I think it might. I forget exactly the syntax, but I think it might have to include your 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 GitHub name to 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 find the repo of the package. Um, uh, okay. Wait, why why does it need to find the repo of the package if you have R installed in your computer already? It's a it's a good question. I mean, I, my understanding is that it doesn't necessarily use the um, the R on the system, at least for some of these. Um, for example, when you are oxygenize and you need additional dependencies, it, it creates its own RM, um, um, I think using the RM package and um, creates its own sort of pre-commit environment to run your hooks. Um, so sometimes mm -hmm. that, depending on a lot of your dependencies, it, it does take a little bit of time to, to, to set up the first time around, like to install of your dependencies. But every subsequent time, as long as you don't change um, or add any additional sort of packages, um, then then it will use the sort of um, the 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 environment that was already set up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're saying yeah it uses this RM package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One other thing that I wasn't super sure about is how, um, whether this sort of setup would be acceptable from a, um, a bioconductor package setup. I don't know. I feel from some of the past interactions, they seem to be becoming stricter on um, sort of, you know, files that aren't lie outside of the normal R package files, right? Um, and things like that, um, but that isn't something I've uh, like I've checked or asked about. Um, yeah. So what David here is referring to is that Bioconductor doesn't let you commit our project files, um, and that's because Bioconductor um, core members might occasionally open your um, code, and they don't want your configuration settings to affect them. Uh, um, so that's one reason there. Right. Um, yeah. For that. Um, uh, cool. Um, so, um, so I guess the steps are you first install pre commit, right? Um, which of the versions did you install? The pip version? Uh, I used the brew version. But only because I was okay. on my Mac, yeah. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. The homebrew one, yeah. And then, and then, um, yeah. Set it. I think 
if if you use the so this is where I'm not sure um, um, exactly um, how they use this version and the the sort of pre-commit framework kind of um, uh, interpolate together and whether they 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 kind of use the same underlying um, um, sort of uh, kind of code, but. For, for the pre-commit, once you've installed it, you have to set up the pre-commit config dot, dot yaml file, right? That, uh, that's the second step. And then when you put that in the root of your project and you run pre-commit install, it then creates within the dot git and the hooks um, directory the, the pre-commit file that you were showing earlier that use this creates. So I think it kind of maybe doesn't use the pre-commit um, like framework, at least. That would be my guess if you could just create the hook directly without the the yaml file right um, um but but yeah i i think uh probably worth checking out both and, and seeing yeah. okay so that means that it could potentially work on windows then right if um because um then you could uh you wouldn't need to install the pre-commit tool on windows right if you already have um the um, dot get forward slash hooks forward slash pre commit file. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice okay. okay. Yeah, because like um, like a few of us occasionally work on Windows, right? I mean, Nick, I think, still works on Windows, right? Um, yeah. All right. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about Linter? Because um, I've, I've heard about it, but I don't know if people here have heard much about think, it. Because it's sure. a little bit different than, than styling, right? Yeah, L Linter is like, it catches, I think it's written by, by Jim Hester that, or the Lint R package. But mm -hmm. for example, if I, if I, I think probably easiest will be just to, I will run the, um, the one against all files. And you'll see that <laughs> but when you run a Linter, it tells me that, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of problems with, um, at least the style. Or I don't want to call it a styling, but you know the the sort of code syntax. But yeah, so for example, um, um, like this is something lines should not be more than eighty characters. I think that's also something that you know BioC check will will flag to you. Um, variable names and functions should be snake case. Um, uh, open curly brackets should never go on their own line. <laughs> so, so these sort of, um, I guess, more like coding standard rather than styling. But I, I find it hard. It's not a strict, um, I don't know, uh, sort of line that's drawn between them. Um, so it doesn't automatically up update the code to. No, not not this one. It just, it just tells you that you're not following proper styling. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. probably it becomes co more complicated um, than than styling to correct. Um, but yeah, it is based on on this package. So I think it is uh, Jim Hester, the the lead author. But I'm sure they have a a man page somewhere which which describes better kind of exactly what 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 it, what is um, checked by by the linter. I'm sure there's also a lot of different um, configs that you can do depending on what you kind of like to be your your um, coding standard. For example, like to change the snake case to the camel case um, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. It, look, it looks like a little bit of like overkill for us right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so sometimes I feel that. Um, to be honest, the, 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 probably the things that I found most useful from this are the like making sure, well, styling and the checking my um, DevTools document or uh, our oxygenize has been run prior to me committing and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, 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 I think but those sort of things feel a little bit. Uh, um, I don't know, like, it just means you don't have to remember them every time, right? <laughs> like, it, 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 like, obviously, in the past, I was, I was running sort of a source on your, the, the update script in the, in the BioC, this dev folder. Um, and, and 
Yeah, which is also kind of fine. Maybe this is a, <laughs> but I kind of like the the way of uh, sort of automating some of this stuff. Do you think there's room for adding any code to buy CDs related to the hooks, or like at this point, it mostly just pointing people to the Lawrence Wal Walter repository? Yeah, I think I think I mean I think you could like um, add. Uh, uh, your own hook as a little R script in the the inst folder for BioCDS and do like exactly the the stuff that you would do for BioCDS within the hook. Um, alternatively, you could point it out to the pre commit. I think it probably will have the same effect, right? Um, but personally, probably, I feel because it's not a widely adopted practice in R yet, it's probably. A small minority that will sort of use it and take it on board, I would say. Um, so maybe it's easier to just kind of direct people to the pre-commit um, mm -hmm. sort of resource, and then um, maybe if it gets much more popular, have your own kind of um, personalized bio see this hook. I don't yeah, because I, I imagine the ones we would use more so the the one about checking large files hmm. <coughs> and the one about styling. I don't know what other one people would like to use. The readme one, I guess, readme RMD. Yeah. Although, I mean, that one we already use with uh, I said this, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because of use this. And uh, um, I think a few of us occasionally have run into that no verify thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thank you again, David. And um...